All right, I think we are now live. Let me check us out here, Max. Okay. Well, I think we're live. I'm going to assume we're live for now. That's uh, hey, live. guys. It's Bernard Nomberg with another weekly episode of Conversations with Commodores. And I've got with me from Nashville, Max Schneider, who is the sports editor of the Vanderbilt Hustler. Good evening, Max. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. I, I came in contact with you a few weeks back. I've I've read your your writings for, for a, a year or two now, and I'm very impressed with your, your love of sports and all things Vanderbilt and otherwise. So I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time with me this evening when we talk a little bit about Vanderbilt sports and, and the like. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, uh, I'm all yours. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, I know you're a senior, soon to be graduating uh, from Vanderbilt undergraduate, but give us a little bit more of your background, my friend. Yeah, so like you said, I'm, I'm supposed to be graduating in a couple months. Still a little bit unclear on uh, how that will all work out now that uh, school has been post or, or classes are online now, but I'm a senior. I'm from New York City. I grew up right in, in the middle of Manhattan. Um, I'm studying political science and communications, uh, and I'm here really, my life at, at school has been student media. And between the Vanderbilt Hustler, I joined as a freshman. I've been writing for four years, covering mostly baseball, basketball, and football. I do uh, a, a television show for Vanderbilt Video Productions uh, called VU Sports Wired. And then we also do our pod, our weekly podcast, uh, the Vanderbilt Hustler Sports 30. And so between those three things, that's kind of been my life at Vanderbilt. i have all Vanderbilt sports. And I knew kind of coming into school that I've always been a big sports guy. I'm a big New York Jets fan at home. Um, so I'm a little bit used to the, uh, the, the losing football culture, per se. But, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's kind of my life. Well, Max, how did you come from, from Manhattan or from the New York area to Vanderbilt? What brought you down south to, to start your education or your, your post-high school education? Yeah, so I knew I wanted to, to be a little bit further from home. Um, I grew up in New York City. I spent my whole life there. And so I knew that I wanted to experience somewhere different. And I loved the city of Nashville when I came down to look at Vanderbilt. And I loved kind of the idea that it's a, a smaller school with a big school feel, and especially given its uh, its sports culture, its Division One environment, and I really love the combination of the academics here and also having that environment, feeling like I was a part of a big school, but still being in a little bit of that smaller environment. So when I came here, I loved it. Um, I applied early. I got in, and I knew it's where I wanted to be. And has it been a pretty good four years for you up until about two weeks ago? <laughs> it's been a great four years. I couldn't have hoped for, for anything else. I've loved every minute here. A little bit sad that it's been cut short. Um, yeah. Friends are kind of uh, leaving one by one at this point because everybody who lives on campus is evacuated. I'm still here in Nashville, but a little bit of a, a sad and abrupt ending, but I've really loved all of my time here. Excellent. Well, talk to me about... How did you get into sports journalism? Did you do any of that in high school or did something prompt you when you got to campus? Tell us how you, you found that niche. Yeah, so I grew up loving sports and I never really knew I would be writing about them. But once I got to high school, um, I was playing baseball in high school and kind of during the other months, we were a spring sport. And during the beginning of, of the football season, of the basketball season, I knew I wanted to be writing um, just to kind of get involved in school sports and in sports outside of school in any way I could. Um, so I joined the student newspaper in high school. Um, by senior year, I was the editor of the student, the sports editor of the student newspaper. Um, and then I applied, when I applied to Vanderbilt, um, the school had a unique sports journalism scholarship that I had really never heard of, um, the Fred Russell Grantland Rice Sports Journalism Scholarship. Um, and I applied to that and I was a little bit kind of unsure whether journalism was going to be my path. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was granted that scholarship, it was kind of eye-opening for me. Realized that this is something I can do, and this is something that people recognize that I can do well, and I kind of dove in head first. Awesome. Well, there's become a really um, a sports writing legacy over the years, obviously going back that far, but in the, in the last 
25, 30 years, you've got um, Buster only, of course, with Major League Baseball. You've got Skip, oh, what Skip, Skip and Shannon. Yeah, both um, on the Fox Sports. Yeah, uh, Willie Geist. I mean, there's, and you know better than I, but there's now a real, in, in the national spotlight, a lot of Vanderbilt grads who are doing some awesome things in sports. Have you had any occasions to, to chat with any of those guys? Yeah, I have, and it's it's been super great. Part of what's so great about kind of the legacy that's been built up uh, in sports journalism here over the past really few decades is that those guys continue to come back and they continue to give back to the Vanderbilt community. Kip Bayless was here a couple years ago. He, he Thank did you. I couldn't think of his last name, Bayless. Yeah, yeah Skip Bayless was here a couple years ago. Um, he did a, a lecture to a lot of students here and then did kind of a smaller discussion with the Vanderbilt Hustler. And so got the chance to meet him. Buster only has been back a couple of times. Lee Jenkins, who used to be with Sports Illustrated, now is in the Clippers front office. Um, he came, he, he's come back and talked. So it's really, it's really been a good opportunity to get to talk to some of these guys who have really reached kind of the, the peak in, in this industry. And it's what all of us strive for. Well, well good deal. Well, earlier this week, you being a sports fan, particularly Vanderbilt sports fan, I had the opportunity to to interview and have a great discussion with one of my classmates. He was a year ahead of me, but everybody knows Barry Goheen, who hit all of those awesome shots in the late 80s. And he wrote a great book about those years, which were my undergraduate years, of all of these game-winning shots. And Buster Olney wrote the foreword to the book. And if you hadn't had a chance to read that, it's, it's definitely worth picking up. Um, unfortunately, the last couple of years, from a basketball standpoint, have not been as productive or as successful as they were back in the day when we had Will Perdue, Frank Cornette, and all those great sharpshooters when the three three point line was first coming in. Gosh, I'm showing my age, but uh, <laughs> tell tell us what is it like being the sports editor of the Vanderbilt Hustler? The Hustler's been around for many decades. It's a great newspaper. I enjoyed reading it most of the time when they weren't too critical of the football <laughs> program. But what's it like been for you the last year or two, however long you've been in that position as the sports editor? It's been great. It's it's really such a class organization, such a great newspaper to be a part of. I really look forward to all my meetings on Sundays, both my editors meeting, my sports meetings. And, and we consistently get great writers every year. And it's been really incredible to see some of the kids that come in and want to write and are passionate about it and really have a talent for it. Um, and that's been consistent all my four years here. Also, just some of the opportunities that have come with being a, being the sports editor for The Hustler, getting to, to go to some of these events live and seeing some of these games. We were at the College World Series last year, which was an unbelievable experience. The, the environment in Omaha, they do such a good job down there. And for us to just be kind of a part of that and be in the press box and get to cover a national championship team, was really incredible. And then days before we, we went, days before we even left to go there, I was at the NBA draft watching Darius Garland be drafted fifth overall by the Cavaliers. So just being able to go to things like the NBA draft, the NFL draft was in Nashville last year, um, the College World Series, some of the games that the, the NIT Invitational a couple of years ago in New York, the Hustler does such a great job of giving you the, the ability to cover those, those events if you really want to. And I, I feel like I've gotten to cover so many things that I never would have imagined I would have been able to before. And some of the, I hate to call them this, but the non-revenue generating sports is what I've always heard them. Uh, bowling and tennis have had a lot of success. Golf has had a lot of success. It's just that the football has had a, a big decline late, not lately, but it's just hadn't really gone up in, in, in Coach Mason's tenure, but I truly hope he's turning it around. And of course, the men and women's basketball programs have struggled the last couple of years, but hopefully, hopefully Stack is, is getting them in the right direction. It was so, it was so great. And, and here's where I'm still kicking myself. I'm in Birmingham. Tuscaloosa is 48 miles from my house to the Camp Coleman Coliseum. I was too tired that night to drive over there. Otherwise, I would have been there in an instant. And I usually yeah. am. And so I missed that game. And then they beat uh, South Carolina, uh, uh, what, a couple of days later, I think, for two great wow. wins. Um, what was it like covering those games? I, I don't know if you cover out-of-town games or not, but what was that like? Well, so that's the crazy part, too, is that Vanderbilt had lost all these games leading up to those, two. The students all go on break. Both of those games are over spring break. 
and then all the students leave, and all of a sudden they pull off a two-game win streak. So, so we didn't have anyone in Alabama covering that game, and I actually wasn't able to make either of those games. I had been there for all the losses before. I was there for the LSU win early in the year, which was really awesome to be a part of. But That was a great, great game. That was a great game, especially because LSU came into that game as a ranked team, and Vanderbilt hadn't shown really the ability to, to, to beat any SEC teams, let alone a team coming off as many wins in a row as LSU was. So wasn't able to make those those games over the break with Alabama and South Carolina, but those were the kind of games late in the year where you could really see the promise for the future. And I think it's rare that you see a team go three and 15 in conference and have the fan base still having some hope. And, and it's because of what we saw from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the growth was really palpable. Well, I, before we go further, I want to welcome a former teammate of mine who actually played at Alabama, uh, excuse me, played uh, my time period, Brian Donnelly uh, is with us. So thank you, Brian, coming, I think from Germantown or, or Nashville. I'm not sure where he is right now, but thanks for tuning in. Guys, I'm talking with Max Schneider. Max, Max originally from New York, but he's a senior uh, at Vanderbilt. He's supposed to graduate in a couple of months. He is the senior, or he's the sports editor of the Vanderbilt Hustler. Now, here's a question that that uh, I know that to be a sports editor, obviously, you've got the love of sports. You've talked about that. You played in high school. You love to write, so you've combined the best of both worlds. But not everybody who writes for the Vanderbilt Hustler has a passion for whatever they're writing about, whether it's about technology or food or the social scene how does that and i'm not trying to get you to show us how the sausage is made but was it a natural fit for you and the other sports writers to be in the sports department so to speak or is it just because you were had certain capabilities of writing they put you guys in those departments and then you learn to to deal with that yes yeah, so you really join wherever you want to be uh, when you enter the hustler, and we we make that pretty clear early on, you won't be writing for a section that you don't have an interest in, and that's part of why I like our sports section so much, and why I like our meetings so much, is because the group of us who are there are really a group of people who love sports even outside of of what we're covering, and, and sometimes you have people covering sports that they don't really know super well, and I think that's good because it gives people an opportunity to really past a wider network and to grow their skills in some other sports. Um, but but I've, I've done that a little bit. I was never a huge uh, soccer person coming into to college. I never played soccer growing up. I never really enjoyed the sport very much. And then coming to see this women's soccer team and how good they were, and, and it really made me start to love the sport more. And so I think within sports, I think you see people out of their comfort zones a little bit. Um, but everybody who's joining and everybody who's part of the sports section seems to really love sports and really love what they're doing, and, and that shines through in our meetings, even when we're not talking Vanderbilt. Well, talk to me a little bit. If, if now that you've been through four years of being on campus and, and holding various positions and, and writing and, and, and going to all of these events, let's say that, that we got a high school senior who you may have already talked to or maybe not, who's now going to come in as a freshman on campus in the fall, assuming the world has restored itself. Yeah. Give me, give me some advice that you would share from your experiences now that you're the, the senior dude. What are you telling freshmen coming in who are now getting onto the Hustler staff, regardless if it's sports or whatever other department? Yeah, I mean, Take all the opportunities you can get, especially early on, because they'll help you so much more going forward. And, I, and when I say that, I mean, there are so many interviews that, that you get to be a part of. There are so many stories that you never thought you might be writing. And just raising your hand, volunteering to write something, even if you're not sure if you can do it, just to get that experience. And it'll help you so much down the road. I remember my first couple months, um, I covered my first football game with the then sports editor at the time. And I just kind of sat there in the press conference and everybody's jumping at the next question and the next question and I'm too afraid to ask. Uh, and, and to see where I've come from there to, to asking all these questions later on is awesome. But I got to interview Kalija Lipscomb pretty early on, a couple months into my freshman year, a couple months into his freshman year. Um, and he talked about his time in high school and how he talked about his relationship with his dad and how his dad owns a barber shop in, in New Orleans and how everybody comes to watch his son play. And I was really nervous going into that interview, but just 
kind of stepping up and, and taking on that story, even though I didn't know how that interview was going to go. Well, has helped me so much going forward. In, in I was going to say, at some point, it probably clicked with you. He's an 18-year-old guy. I'm an 18-year-old guy. We're in the same class. I don't know if you had classes together, but you're the same year. He just happens to be a little bit more recognized in his field, figuratively and literally, than maybe you are. But I bet you, if you, as a senior sports writer, were then interviewing freshman football players this past year, the roles may have been reversed a little bit if you if you really admit it to yourself and maybe admit it to us, you're probably pretty confident by that point about doing your job. Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of it was I was really nervous going into that first one, but just to constantly reassure yourself that the people who you're talking to are always going to be around your age. I mean, you're interviewing other college students and they're happy to be talking to you. And this is probably the first time or one of the first times that people have written stories about them. Yeah. And, and they're, yeah, and they're just as goofy as you are. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I went into interview Kalijah, and and when I got there, he was asleep on the couch. And so I mean, he's a regular college student. He's exhausted from from all the work he's been doing. It's it's a very similar experience. And then going into this year, I mean, yeah, uh, a lot of these first year guys on campus, a lot of these these freshmen are just kind of getting acclimated to the media aspect of the sport. They didn't really have so much of that in high school, and that's something that I've been a part of for a while now. And go into those spring training camps and go into that fall camp with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more experience. I'm Absolutely, going. you had the experience. But I want to welcome my buddy OJ Fleming from Tennessee. OJ was a tight end in the mid mid nineties and is very active on our page. So welcome OJ for joining us for a few minutes. Let's talk about that. We're going to get to well. Let me let me change for just a second. By the time you're a senior, Coach Mason, Coach Corbin, uh, I don't know about Stack because it was just his first year. Some of these coaches on campus, Coach Hewitt with lacrosse, I don't know if you covered lacrosse, but these coaches are getting to know you because you've been showing up for four years. Yeah. So talk about talk about that dynamic, how it's changed or evolved from your freshman year to your senior year. Yeah, it's really been great, and I feel more kind of welcome in – in those press conferences, in those media, in, in those media availabilities and stuff like that, just kind of having that repertoire with some of the coaches and particularly with Corbin. I mean, he's the kind of guy who he's not you always, you don't always know how he's feeling. He's not going to be super joyful all the time, even when they're winning. I mean, he's a pretty stoic guy. Yeah. Um, but just when we got to the College World Series last year for him to just kind of tap us on the back and say, good to see you guys here. And, He's happy to have that kind of representation from the school and see that the students are involved. And that's really our goal is, is we want to be an outlet for, for everybody who, who loves Vanderbilt sports and all the fans. But we, we deliver kind of a unique student perspective, and we want to make sure that these coaches are in touch with what students are thinking and with what students are, are looking for in their athletics. And that's kind of the opportunity we've gotten over the past couple of years. We've had Derek Mason on our radio show now three years running, and, and it's really been great to kind of build a uh, sort of a rapport with with some of those coaches i think it really helps the work we do a absolutely you know historically schools like syracuse and missouri and i could go on and on are known for their journalism programs but i don't think a lot of people really outside the south know that vanderbilt has a pretty strong program itself and that's a tribute to what you guys do and have done for for years there um all right i'm going to put you on the spot for just a second talk yeah. a little bit about time management you put in as much time as any of the athletes on campus, as anybody else who has a specialty in their respective fields, on or off sports, it doesn't matter. How did you figure out that balance that worked for you? It's a lot of just planning beginning of your week, just knowing this is this is a story I'm going to write. I'm going to cover this game. And for the three hours that, that Vanderbilt men's basketball is playing against Alabama or whoever it is, that's where I am and everything else can, can cease to exist for those three hours. And, and that's kind of the tough part early on is managing, you know, your, your articles that you're writing, you're doing that in the same time as you're taking other classes. And it, it's, it's kind of like homework and you like it a lot more, but you're doing both and you're trying to juggle both at the same time. And so I've learned to be a little more organized with everything I'm doing, understanding, hey, this I got to do by Wednesday this assignment's due Friday. I'm going to write this article tonight. I'm going to dedicate my hours to it. And at this point, I mean, so much of my time is spent editing, even more than it's spent writing at this point. 
Uh, I'm getting so many submissions a week and I love that because I love how much content we're able to put out but between television, between radio and between all the articles. I have a full plate really. It's really like another major, uh, it, it, it is and I it's love worth, it. Yeah, it's more than just one extra class. I don't know how many hours you're spending but it's it's got to be 15, 20 hours or more a week with all of these mediums that you're you're in right now. Yeah, um, I'd say I, I'd say probably I, I take an average of about 15 hours of classes each semester, and I'd say probably double that. Yeah. Um, so 15 and 15, it's really like the same as my workload in class. Well, let's let's kind of pivot away from you specifically, and let's talk about for anybody who follows the Vanderbilt Sports Program. It's been a roller coaster for the last 20 years with them taking away or redirecting uh, where the sports uh, department is going to fall under and the money and the budget. And I don't want to get too deep into all of this, but talk to us about your experiences being around David Williams at the time he was in the position. He did some really great things, but with doing those kind of things, there's lots of criticism from others who may or may not fully know. Was he accessible to the hustler? Was he accessible to you guys at times? Yeah, David was very accessible, um, and it was really great. It, it was a great opportunity to get the chance to know him over the couple of years that, that we overlapped here at, at school. He was very accessible, and I think one thing about David Williams that isn't necessarily true about a lot of other athletic directors is he played such a big role in Vanderbilt outside of the athletics program is that that, that that role is as a vice chancellor and as an athletic director, but he also really embraced the vice chancellor role, and I think he started to do that more on as uh, later on in his tenure and in his final couple of years here at Vanderbilt. He was really passionate about both of those roles, and a big reason for that was he loved being in touch with the students. He was very accessible. We talked to him before, um, right after the passing of Perry Wallace, before the movie about Perry Wallace came out. He did a great sit down interview with us. He, he spoke to a couple of our other sports writers uh, in just his final few months here. And so he was really a great resource for us. And, and so we, we miss him here, but he, he, was really, he was really a great resource for all the students here. Well, hopefully Candace can embrace her role and seek the guidance of many who've been, been before her. I know she has multiple degrees from the school, loves the school, but being, a, an, and I certainly have no experience about what I'm about to say, but being an SEC athletics director, that's a, that's a big job. And I know she's up to the task. I just hope people give her a chance to, to prove her, her role there and, and, and what she's hoping to do. Yeah, and something that's really unique about Candace is that the student athletes are behind her almost unanimously. And you saw when she was appointed, even the interim role, all of these former student athletes are coming out on Twitter, tweeting their support, saying it's it's a matter of time, they've been waiting. And David Williams was incredibly supportive of her and wanted to see her in this role sure, too. Sure. So just should the support she's had from the university pretty early on. And I know there's a lot this university needs to get done. There's a lot on her plate and and there should be i mean this is a this is a school that's hasn't been as in touch with its athletic program as maybe it should be and so she has a lot on her plate but she definitely has the support of the vanderbilt community and specifically from the student athletes who who have backed her from day one you know you've got multiple national championships in a couple of different sports there when i was in school and here i go sounding like the old guy the hawk wasn't the hawk the right. Hawk wasn't even named at that time. It had metal bleachers, chain link fence on either side. It's It sat right where it sits. But Max, I could walk down the right field line and stand at the fence and talk to my buddy, Jim Schiffman, who played right field, who's all SEC right fielder. There could be a foul ball over my shoulder that went across the street to where the tennis complex, I could go pick it up two innings later and it'd still be there. And that was not a knock on Coach Muburn, but come forward, what to Coach Corbin has done is unprecedented. And it really, I think is, and yeah, it's my school and it's easy for me and you to say this, but prove me wrong. Right now it's the gold standard in baseball in college. Oh, with, 100%. With David Price and all of those guys in the pros, 
not just giving of their money, but coming back in the off season. There was a wonderful article that I just read, and forgive me, I don't know if you contributed to it. I can't remember where I read it, but it talks about the culture that he has cultivated with the pros locker room and all, and even players who played against Vanderbilt or uh, or played against Vanderbilt players out now in the pros. They want to come back and work out in the off season. That's the the environment that he has uh, so created over there. Yeah, that was a great article. I believe it was in Sports Illustrated. And just seeing this is the gold standard. You said it. That's 100% accurate. I mean, this is the college baseball program that every program around the country looks to and wants to be like. And Michigan said that last year after game three of the college baseball World Series. Their catcher, Joe Donovan, said, this is the program we, we grow up wanting to, we grow up watching, we grow up trying to emulate, we hope to be this program in a couple of years. And that's really how I think most teams around the nation feel watching Vanderbilt. Yeah. And, and part of that is the talent, but part of that is, like you said, the culture that Corbin's created, that pro locker room. I mean, it's not just Vanderbilt guys. It's a lot of SEC guys, LSU guys, Alabama guys, South Carolina guys. They all come back to Nashville to train ahead of the Major League Baseball season. And Corbin welcomes them all with open arms, and it's really cool to see. And it's it's the it's the attention to detail. The last four or five years, I've written a letter to Coach Corbin just saying, thanks for a great season, Coach. He writes me back every year. He does it yeah. to me. He knows I'm a fan of the program. We've never really spent any time together. But it's just that attention to detail. It's just, it's, it's remarkable. It is. Um, he sent us a letter at the beginning of the year before any of our coverage even started, just thanking us in advance for for everything he's he's so he, he's his attention to detail is so good and that's so important in the sport but but especially just as a coach and as a leader of men to to have that attention to detail and let people know even outside of his team we recognize what you're doing we're happy that you support us in any way possible it really goes a long way and max i'll come up to one uh, at least one football game in the fall each year and my favorite um my favorite time is when he opens up the Friday practices to the public. And I'll get up to Nashville early enough just so I can go sit in the stands and listen and watch a practice. I'm a huge baseball nut. But to sit there and watch Coach Corbin show the finer details of bunting down the third base line to one of the left-handed catching, hitting catchers, just detail like that. But I, I, I'm getting lost in the weeds here. Let's get back to what we're really here talking about, not just my, my love of baseball. Talk to me a little bit about, Max, when you go to a game and it's a Vanderbilt game, how do you draw the line between being a fan and being objective and doing your job? Because you're watching guys on the field or the court or wherever it is who might be in one of your classes on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, and it's it's very difficult. And I'm a, I came into the, to college and I knew I was going to root for whatever school I went to, and especially Vanderbilt. So it's hard to kind of turn off that fan switch when you when you get into that press box. And it's just kind of understanding what you're there to do, um, understanding that everybody else around you, they don't have any specific Vanderbilt allegiance. They're all there to, to cover the game and, and, and provide a different sort of perspective for the readers. And that's kind of what I, what I try to do, just understand what my role there is and, and try to break it down from a baseball fan perspective, not so much a Vanderbilt fan perspective. And and I grew up playing baseball. I played baseball my whole life and just kind of looking at, at the, the different aspects of the game, trying to, to see what works, what doesn't work for some of these pitchers on, on, on both teams and in any respect. And so, so much of it for me is trying to, to tune out the two teams that are playing and just kind of focus on baseball and what's happening. Because at the end of the day, I mean, everybody at this university wants to see Vanderbilt win every game they play in any sure. sport. But just understanding that even in a loss, I got to do my job just as well. Now, when you're covering a game and you're wearing your, your Hustler credentials, are yep. you allowed to wear school colors or school insignia or anything like that? How do you, what do they allow you to do or not do? I believe I'm allowed to wear school colors. I don't. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed. I've, I've honestly never done it. And I think that, that that's part of it. It's just kind of understanding your role and understanding that you're there, not as a Vanderbilt fan, but as a reporter. Um, if you're wearing kind of that Vanderbilt shirt into the press box, you're already kind of straying a little bit from, from what you want your role to be. And I'll wear that. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe cover one game on Friday 
and then I'll be in the stands in a Vanderbilt jersey on Saturday. Um, and that's fine. But just kind of when I cover games, I, I always try to, to avoid anything, uh, anything Vanderbilt. Yeah, and I, I'm sure you share in the same sentiment that I do, that we're never going to see Amart drag his bat up to the plate. We're never going to get to see Harrison Ray doing his special things and some of those other guys who are going to get drafted eventually. Thankfully, we'll get Kumar back and some of the young guys uh, back. But yeah, we're all we're all sad that all sports are are at a halt for right now. But hopefully, it's it's temporary. But as we get closer toward the end of our our conversation, Max, tell us what's next in store for you. Have you gotten beyond graduation? Do you know where you're headed next, and where will we be able to find you? Uh, I have not gotten beyond graduation right now. I don't know where I'm headed next. Um, I, wherever it will be. Um, I'll make sure everyone knows and, and I'll be accessible always. Um, and I'll always kind of come back to, to Vanderbilt and always be a fan of, of this university and everything that, that, that it's given me. And so I don't know what's next, um, but I'm a little bit excited to just kind of be a fan of this program and to kind of step into that new role. And I know the people who are coming after me are gonna do a great job. I've had some really great writers under me, but I'm excited to just be a fan uh, of Vanderbilt again. And, just kind of root for these guys, even the ones that are going on in the pros, like you, like you mentioned, Austin Martin, probably be a top three pick in this year's draft. And so I'm excited to root those guys on in the pros, and those guys were students alongside me. Um, but I'm excited to just be a Vanderbilt fan. Uh, I don't know what's next, but I'm looking forward to it, whatever it is. Well, before I let you get out of here, and I appreciate you sharing that, you've been there for four years. You mentioned the College World Series. That's tough to top. Yep. What are some of your other best memories, either as a fan, not working, or during the time period you've had to cover some sports uh, for the Hustler? So, like you said, the College Road Series definitely tops the list. Um, but I think a couple of those games leading up to it were really incredible. Rockers no-hitter as a fan was one of my favorite moments. And I was watching that back home from New York because um, school had already been let out, and I was sitting there in front of my TV and just kind of nervous that this was an elimination game and the no hitter wasn't even on my mind for a while just kind of hoping because it was a one run game the entire time just hoping that Vanderbilt could hold on to it and then when he finally completed that no hitter that was really a special moment um, another one that stands out is, is the Texas Bowl against Baylor and we lost that game but from a journalist perspective to be a part of a bowl game to be kind of voting on the, the MVP of that game and Keyshawn Vaughn was so incredible there's no question who it was. Right, absolutely. Well, they had us fill out. Um, they gave us two sheets of paper because the game was so close towards the end. They said, yeah. give us one player on Vanderbilt and give us one player on Baylor. Because I think if they didn't do that, I think Keyshawn Vaughn would have won the MVP in a loss. That's how good he was. Um, so they had to have us vote for one guy on each team just to make sure that we weren't going to award Keyshawn Vaughn the MVP no matter what, because that's how incredible he really was. Oh, it was the most amazing running back performance I've ever seen. But going to, to Kumar's no-no or perfect game against Duke, I dare you, I challenge you to find a more amazing pitching performance in the college level with that, with the season on the line. It was unbelievable. And you won't find you won't find a, a more special performance than that at the college level, and, and you could count on one hand the the number of performances even at the pro level you'll find that were as dominant as he was that night. I mean, the the guy he's he's a freshman. He's pitching in an elimination game against a team that just put up 18 runs the night before. I mean, there's an immense amount of pressure on him, and he doesn't just show up with with a good start like he had the past few times. He shows up with the best stuff we've ever seen from him and really established that pitch as the premier pitch of any guy in college baseball. I think all 19 strikeouts were on that slider. I mean, Duke hitters knew what were coming. They could they have touched it. it. They, could, they, they could have taken a tennis racket up there and not touched it. But it was like Kumar just showed, and we'll get off of this, but it's, he just showed how cool he was. 18 runs against us the night before. He's not even old enough to say, here, hold my beer, I got this. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. And just, yeah. it was amazing. Well, and Max, how can, folks, how can folks get in touch with you? I know you're on your way out the door uh, in the next two months from school. I guess, I guess I should have asked you. That certainly doesn't look like the Carmichael Towers 
where you are. So I'm going to assume no. you're not, you're not living not. in I can see them from my window, actually, but no, no, it's not. I'm off campus. Um, I, I live in an off-campus apartment right across the street from, from campus, actually. If I lived on campus, I'd have to have been out of here by now. So yeah. glad I get to be here a little bit longer. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, I mean, it's on my on my bio on the Hustler website. I have my email, my Twitter, my LinkedIn. I'm happy to to interact with anybody on any of those those websites. I'm I'm very very active on Vanderbilt Twitter. Um, I think it's it's such a great place, and I think that the fan base there is so great. So I'm very easy to get in touch with. If anyone wants to get in touch with me, talk Vanderbilt sports, talk really anything. Um, that'll do it. Pretty much email. Well, OJ says to to send you some good luck in the future. He's uh, he's still with he's us. Thank you, OJ. Max, I, I certainly appreciate your time this evening. I know it's 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 the weirdest of circumstances for all of us, but thank you for providing a little bit of a break in the evening for us to talk about some good times. And we certainly wish you the very best of luck, my friend. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Guys, this will conclude us for another conversation with Commodores. We're going to come to you again each week coming up. We've got a whole bunch of, of former players in the mix, and I'm hoping to get Coach Watson Brown if we can get the technology issue uh, squared away. But y'all have a good evening, and we'll talk to you next week.